Right, so in this video we're revisiting the idea of addition of ordinates as a technique for sketching um, the sum of two functions that we know separately about their two graphs but we don't necessarily know what the sum of those two graphs look like. So we looked at this way back in um, chapter one I think from memory um, and we looked at this for other graph types. We're simply going to apply that technique when we've got um, circular functions or trig graphs. Um, so we're just going to look at two examples here. So remembering the first thing we want to do is be able to think about the equation as a sum of two graphs. So I'm going to think about this equation here as 2 times cos of 3x plus negative sine of 4x. So essentially what we want to do is we want to sketch the graph of y equals 2, sorry, of y equals 2 cos 3x and we also want to sketch the graph of y equals negative sine 4x and then adding the ordinates, the y coordinates of those two graphs will enable us to draw the sum of the two graphs. Okay, so let's think about that. So the green graph, I've got um, a grid here and a scale so to help give us some um, sort of some accuracy where sometimes this is not a very accurate technique. So we've got um, 2 times cos of 3x, so that's a cosine graph with a period of pi on 3. Okay, so we've got axes scaled in sixths here, which is helpful. Um, and, uh, sorry, period of 2 pi on 3, my apologies, and a, an amplitude of 2. Okay, so let's think about that. So we've got, I'm going to draw this one in green. So the period is going to be 2 pi on 3. The amplitude is 2. Um, it's a cos graph, so no reflection. Right, so let's get that first period right. So it's going to start at its maximum value, which is 2. 2 pi on 3. So remembering each of these um, ticks is pi on 6 by the look of it. Actually, it's even more than that. It's pi on 12, sorry. I wasn't looking at the... Ah, now, I've been asked to draw this graph from 0 to 2 pi. I'm sorry, I'm going to rescale um, the axis to suit that. Sorry, I've got the wrong axis. So pi to 2 pi. So then, yes, each of these ticks is pi on 6 which is 4 pi, uh, sorry, so 2 pi on 3 is 4 pi on 6, so end of the period will be here at 4 pi on 6. Okay, let's get that colour right. Okay, halfway between those two, so at 2 pi on 6 or pi on 3 is where we'll be at our minimum value, which is negative 2, and then halfway between there is where we'll get x-intercepts. Right, then we can just continue to follow the pattern. Centre, minimum, centre, maximum, centre, minimum, centre, maximum. That makes sense. We should see three complete cosine curves if the period is 2 pi on 3 and we are drawing the graph from 0 to 2 pi. I got that 0 to 2 pi from the domain here. That's why I adjusted the scale. Okay, the second graph, the negative sine graph, uh, amplitude is 1 and the period is 2 pi on 4, so pi on 2. So we should see four complete sine graphs happening here. Uh, well maybe I should have adjusted the domain rather than the scale, that's okay. Um, so period is pi on 2, okay, so that's going to be there, so we're going to start at zero finishing at pi on two which is here um, the other x intercept will be halfway so we are going to need to use twelfths that's okay we can do that We've got a nice grid just half them and then it's a negative sine graph so halfway between there we can have a minimum value so actually we technically needed 20 fourths but that's okay we'll just do that by i uh, sorry amplitude is one not two Okay, so then we can just continue to follow that pattern. Okay. 
Okay, and we can draw in the graph. So now we are adding the y values. So remember you essentially want to pick an x value. So that, let's say for example I take here, whatever this x value is. The y value of this function is this, the y value of this function is this. We want to add together those two y values to get the y value of the sum function. So if we're adding this negative value onto this positive value, so whatever this distance is here, we essentially need to take it off down there. So our graph is essentially going to go through this point here. Okay, And we essentially want to repeat that process. Sorry, I'm clumsy with my eraser at the moment. Um, we essentially want to repeat that process for as many points as we need to in order to get a sense of the graph shape. Okay. All right, so good places to start are where one of your graphs has a y coordinate of zero. If you've got, um, so right here on the y-axis, the y-coordinate of the blue graph is 0. Adding that together with the y-coordinate of the green graph, which is 2, will give us 2. Okay. Again, so finding points where one of your graphs has an x-intercept, it means that your sum graph, which I'm drawing in purple here, will go through the other graph. So here at um, pi on 6, my green graph, the y-value is 0, my blue graph Therefore, adding 0 onto its y value, it will just be at that y value. Okay, so repeating. Let's just let's start with all the x-intercepts. Everywhere we've got an x-intercept, so 0 plus 0 here. We're going to go through there. Uh, we're going to be sort of here. 0 plus we're going to be kind of there. So we've got quite a lot of x-intercepts here, which those alone will enable us to get quite a lot of points on the graph. Okay, so I've got some points marked. Um, other places that are important sometimes might be where the two graphs cross. So say for example, if we're looking at here, where the two graphs cross, that's the y value where they both cross. So we're going to be doubling that y value. Okay, so we'll mark that in. So I'm just going to get rid of that dashed line. There's enough going on here without lots of extra lines happening. So we're going to sort of double that height. So I'm going to take that height there and double it. So maybe a bit past here. Again, this is a very imprecise art. And then you might just pick a few key points. So I'm going to add that on to here. So maybe sort of there. Um, looking for points where the graphs are both about equidistant, either side of the x-axis. That should be where we actually cross the x-axis. Um, so looking for those points. Um, so say for example, somewhere kind of here, um, and simply just plotting out some points. So going to be kind of there. Here you might want to look at, for example, that height, adding it onto here. So we're going to come right up out here. Again, sort of picking some key points um, as to what is going on. Right, let's have a look. Have we got enough? Might just do another. I'm going to add that onto there. So I'm going to come right down here. Roughly equidistant either side of the axis, sort of somewhere here. All right, so we've possibly got enough to start drawing. And it's going to be a pretty approximate kind of process. That's the nature of this. come further up there. If you're not sure, add in another point. If you're not sure which way your graph's going to go, what might be happening here. Yes, this is still going to be quite high up here. And across the x-axis somewhere maybe there. And again, it's going to be higher up because we're adding that amount on. So it's going to be going to go up and then come back. Okay, so we've essentially got something that looks a little bit a little bit like that. 
All right, my graphs probably become a bit um, cumbersome. Let me just flip over to a graphing program and see if we can get a clearer sense of whether we're vaguely correct in our drawing. Okay, so here we're seeing our uh, three graphs drawn. So the green graph is the two times cos of three x, the blue graph is the negative sine of four x, and the purple graph therefore is the sum of those two graphs. So if we just flick back um, whilst ours is messy, I don't think we've done too bad a job um, at actually looking at a sense of the graph shape. Now one of the things I really want to be clear about here is thinking about the period of the purple graph. So the period of the green graph was 2 pi on 3 and the period of the blue graph is pi on 2. Okay, So you're going to need to look at the lowest common multiple of those two periods in order to ensure that you've seen one complete period. Let me just have a quick look at um, adjusting this slightly. Let me make this um, maximum value 4 pi rather than 2 pi. Okay, so now we're seeing um, double what we were seeing and we can now see a sense of repeat. So actually we can see, if we, particularly if we have a look at that very big maximum value on the purple graph, um, that only happened once when we were looking from 0 to 2 pi. Now when we can see from 0 to 4 pi, we're seeing that's happening again a second time. And whilst we've got a lot of squiggles here, if we look carefully, we actually are seeing two complete repetitions of the purple graph by looking from 0 to 4 pi, which means actually 0 to 2 pi was one complete period of the original graph. Let me go back over here. Now that's to do with the fact that the blue graph, the green graph had a period of um, 2 pi on 3. The blue graph had a period of pi on 2 and so therefore the lowest common multiple. So the first time that pi on 2 and 2 pi on 3 meet. Okay. So for example, if we think about our, um, our graph here, so pi on 2 is that, that, that and that. Okay. So those are four periods of pi on 2. So that's where we're seeing our four sine curves. Then our cos curves go bigger than that. They take a period of 2 pi on 3. So another 2 pi on 3 and another 2 pi on 3. So the first time that those two end at the same point, start and finish at the same point, is a distance of 2 pi apart. So the point is, is that the period is 2 pi, which is the lowest common multiple of 2 pi on 3 and pi on 2, which are the two pe separate periods of the two function, original functions. Okay, That's the key thing. It's a bit like when we talk about the domain of the functions as being the intersection of the domains of the two separate functions when we're doing this addition of ordinates. Similarly, it's kind of thinking about the period as being the intersection is not really the right word, but the lowest common multiple of those two periods, we'll need to look at that span of values so we see one complete picture of what's happening and then we can repeat that. Okay, let's have a quick look at this one. Addition of ordinates to sketch cos of 2 pi on 3x and cos of 2 pi on 5x for one complete cycle. Okay, so let's draw this one, y equals cos of 2 pi on 3. So amplitude of both of these is 1. Um, so given that, actually, I'm just going to rescale this vertical axis. Let's just make that. Oh, no. No, sorry. I'll leave it as it is so we've got room to add them. Um, so the period here is 2 pi divided by 2 pi on 3. So that is 2 pi times 3 on 2 pi. So that's going to be 3. Same logic for the second graph. We'll draw y equals sine of 2 pi on 5x. Same logic means that this period is going to be 2 pi divided by 2 pi on 5, so that's going to give us 5. Okay, so we've got a period of um, 3 and a period of 5. Let's draw the cos graph first. It's got a period of 3. It's a cos graph with no reflection. Amplitude is 1. So start at its maximum value, end of the period at the maximum value, halfway along the period at the minimum value. X-intercepts will be there and there. Okay, following that pattern. Okay, let's 
so there is my cos curve Okay, so there we go there. Now the sine curve has a period of five, uh, so and it's positive sine, so it's going to start at the origin five. It'll be at the uh, still on the axis, and then two and a half will be another x-intercept. Halfway, so one point two five will be the maximum, and one point two five on from there will be the minimum. Okay, so we can continue to follow the pattern oh I got off track with my pattern 1.25 1.25 1.25 to 10, 15, we should be finishing there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, perfect. Okay, so following the pattern, joining the dots. Okay. And then adding ordinates. Okay, so start with where you've got x intercepts. So this is a fairly tedious kind of process and we talked about this previously. Um, I wouldn't really get too stressed about this being on the exam um, or certainly not with any level of significant precision. It's um, very much a fairly approximate technique. However, actually there was a question on um, last year's exam where it really was helpful to be able to think about addition of ordinates in terms of what your graph was going to look like um, that you were dealing with. It's all part of that, you know, being able to think through logically what am I expecting my graph to look like. Uh, okay, so we're going to have a point somewhere here where we cross the x-axis. We're going to have a point somewhere here where we cross the x-axis as well. I'm going to go through about there. The x axis may be sort of here. Just going to dip under the x axis there because we've got a minimum there. Uh, so we're subtracting one of that value, which means it's just going to go under the x axis there. Uh, then thinking about perhaps doubling this point, we're going to come right out sort of here, adding that height on here. Again, doubling that point is going to come right out kind of here. And then that's nearly going to be at 2 there. I'm going to cross the x axis somewhere in here. I'm going to double that point, it's going to be up there. And again, we've got that kind of positive value that's not quite 1 adding onto there, so we're not quite going to cross the x axis there, but we will somewhere in after here. And again, probably not for very long because we're going to have to come back down again. So it is really just about marking out points, enough points until you think you've got enough information to be able to draw the graph. So doubling that value almost out to two there. Okay, 
going to have a go at joining up what I've got here. Actually, I should double that. It's going to go up a bit there. So we're going to go up for a bit and then we're going to go back down. We're going to dip slightly below the x-axis there. Gonna, oops, sorry. We're going to come right down quite low here. Back up here and then right down quite high up there. Okay, I think I've probably got a bit of a wobble happening in this sort of region here. Didn't perhaps um, draw as precisely as I could have, um, but we've again got quite a good sense. Now again, thinking about our green graph as having a period of 5, our blue graph as having a period of 3, our purple graph is going to have a period which is the lowest common multiple of 3 and 5. So that means a period of 15. So over this span here from 0 to 15, we are seeing one complete period of this particular graph here. And again, you can have a plot of it on your CAS and see whether we've got it vaguely in the right place. Um, but this is more about thinking through that idea of what it's going to look like, in particular thinking about what the period of this sum function would be and working out what the lowest common multiple of those two separate periods are.